my dream as a kid was all about race cars. In fact, I wanted to found a race car company. Now, this dream was bigger than anything. In fact, it is the reason why I decided to become an engineer. You see, what fascinated me weren't so much motors, but the way these guys looked. I found their beauty just striking, these shapes that were evocative of the sleekest animals on earth. I mean, dolphins, sharks, you name it. I grew up in a household with, on one side, a mother who was a hands-on architect, and on the other side, a father who was a theoretical mathematician. I guess in many ways, I just landed somewhere in the middle. I had a deep curiosity for science and an admiration for aesthetics and the arts. I guess I found this mix in race cars. Now, my dream followed me up until the very start of my PhD. Yeah, I was actually set to design and research Formula One cars. But at the same time, I had this weird feeling inside me, this cooking vibe. The dream of being the founder of the next Ferrari just felt so elusive. Not to mention that designing race cars to be a little bit sleeker, well, I'm not sure that was going to really fulfill me. And so very rapidly, my curiosity led me to seek directions where my passion for one thing could be a source of inspiration for another and where really perhaps I maybe have a chance to make a small difference. Lo and behold, and to my own great surprise, I found this in the lungs. Now, granted, the lungs and race cars have nothing in common, but breathing, the cornerstone of life, has everything to do about air flows. In fact, in this world, I found myself in front of a dear and deep engineering challenge, one that would be the onset of my career as a scientist and as a researcher. And this has to do with drug delivery to the lungs, and in particular, inhalation aerosols. Now, drug delivery, as the name suggests, is about delivering a medicine from one place, namely the mouth, and going all the way to a finish line, in other words, the airways of the lungs. Now, in this world, respiratory medicine, its hallmark is inhalation aerosols. And what struck me is that if you look at about 100 years of development, well, really, at the end of the day, things haven't changed all that much. And the discouraging bit is that we still don't manage to do this efficiently. Now, let me come back to the race cars for a moment. In this world, we talked about the beauty in my eyes, but beauty serves a function. In other words, form serves function. And scientifically, this is underpinned in the world of aerodynamics. In other words, the science of how air flows around the body. Now, in the world of race cars, nailing the aerodynamics is a key between winning and losing a race. And to do that, you need speed, you need control, and naturally, you need to get yourself to the finish line. But really, at the end of the day, inhalation therapy shares many of these common goals. Because first and foremost, inhalation therapy is all about aerosols. But aerosols are what? They're basically little particles that flow in air, and otherwise, they must obey the laws of aerodynamics. And so what we're really after is controlling aerodynamics through shape, size, speed, and of course, get to that finish line, being the airways of the lungs. So okay, let's try and get a little bit of intuition here. I've put up two very distinct examples of cars, and as much, as much, as we love our dear old station wagon, there is a good reason why you don't see a shape like that on the racetrack. And it's not just because it doesn't have cool stickers on it. It's because it's not aerodynamic. In fact, were you to fit the same motors on these two vehicles, hands down, the Formula One would reach the, the finish line before. And that's because the Volvo, in this case, is just too resistant to air. So, okay. With this intuition in mind, let's address inhalation therapy. By and large, in the common inhalers that we use most of the time, we are inhaling spherical particles. Now, spherical particles are not necessarily the most ideal shape if you're trying to reach the deeper airways. Now, I'm all about the race cars, right? And when you look around in sports, then of course, competition is everything that matters. And you should keep a good eye on your competition because it turns out that very often it's your source of inspiration. But that's actually very true in the world of inhalation therapy. 
For instance, I'm showing here asbestos. Now, some of you may know asbestos are actually thin fibrous materials that are minerals that have been commonly used as construction material and as an insulation material. But they're also extremely hazardous uh, particles. They can cause severe lung disease and in particular cancer. And that actually has to do with their aerodynamics. You see, fibers, in other words, these asbestos particles, have the ability through their shape to just transit through the entire airway and lodge as deep as possible and never come out. Now, inspired by the aerodynamics of these fibers, we're seeking new directions to tailor, customize the shapes of drug delivery carriers. So you understand loud and clear that form serves function. And if form serves function, then of course it needs to be adapted. And if it needs to be adapted, in other words, one size does not fit all. Now with that in mind, I come to a dear topic of mine, and that's inhalation therapy in children. You see, in children, the problem is accrued. In fact, we deliver a lot worse than we do in adults. And one reason has to do that in this world, well, very often, your children are using the same inhalers with the same particles, and then you adapt the dosage according to the weight of the child. But that's one form for different functions. Now, children are not miniature adults. Their lung anatomy is different, their airways are smaller, their breathing patterns are different, and so you've guessed it. The way aerosols will be inhaled is, of course, different. Now, to give you a sense of what I mean by this, I'm showing you here the anticipated deposition patterns, in other words, where inhaled particles would land between a child and an adult. And the particle sites are color-coded according to their size. The punchline here is that if you're interested in, say, depositing aerosols for asthma in upper and mid airways, in children, really your strategy based on aerodynamics should be to make particles smaller relative to the adults. And based on this principle, this leitmotiv of form serves function, my group here at the Technion is exploring new strategies to customize, to tailor inhalation therapy in children. Now, of course, inhalation therapy doesn't always work. For instance, following severe pneumonia, a car crash, drowning, inhaling fire, and so on and so forth, your lungs may just fail. And in this case, you need assisted ventilation you are in the intensive care unit, and you need to be on a machine, and you are intubated. This umbrella disease, this condition known as acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS, affects worldwide hundreds of thousands of people every year. And mortality rates are typically between 35 and 50%. In this world, air inhalation aerosols are not an option, yet you need to deliver a therapy into the lungs. Now, what's been often tried unsuccessfully is to instill liquid therapies through the intubation tube, and that has not worked. You see, adults, unlike children, have massive lungs. And so when you inject a liquid, a therapy, then of course, physically, it will go in the direction of gravity. It will pool. Let me try and be clear about this. Here's a very simple experiment. These are 3D printed upper airway models like you've seen before in the picture. And we're going to try and instill through the trachea a liquid. No surprise, the liquid will go in the directions that are the most aligned with gravity. What am I trying to tell you here? In this engineering challenge, in ARDS, our goal, what we're trying to do is overcome gravity. And you can't use inhalation aerosols, and you really can't instill a liquid. So now I'm going to try and draw a bit of motivation and inspiration from the world of cars. Now, I told you how important aerodynamics are. But if you only focus on aerodynamics, the outcomes are detrimental. Have a look. I don't know why I'm 
I'm smiling. It didn't turn out too well for our pilot here. <laughs> the point I'm drawing is that in making a shape so aerodynamic, in fact, a natural outcome is to look like a wing. And the faster that you go, the more likely you are to lift off, which is exactly what's happening here. So actually what you're witnessing is it's part of the same engineering challenge. In this world, you need to add force to gravity to keep you stuck to the ground. And how have we engineered this? Well, in the world of Formula One, that's why these shapes are so distinct. You take wings, you flip them, and you attach them along the body, near the nose, along the body, and of course the well-known spoiler in the back. Together, these inverted wings exert downforce to keep you to the ground. The faster you go, the more downforce you got. In ARDS, we need to literally lift off and beat gravity. So how have we come up with the strategy for this? Well, if liquids won't work, liquid foam therapy might just do the trick. Because in this world, foams are basically soap bubbles. And soap bubbles, as we know, are mostly air for the same amount of liquid. And air, well, it should have a reasonable chance at fighting the effects of gravity. So let's come back to that deer experiment of ours. And you'll remember what happened with the liquids. But if you take the same therapy and foam it, then suddenly, suddenly, all airways are now potentially ventilated, even those that were directly opposed to the direction of gravity. At the moment, my group is exploring ways to implement and test the safety and efficacy of lift, of liquid foam therapy in real lungs. Now, in this world of lift, one fascinating thing comes out is that you start opening new directions, new highways that were just not within reach. So what you're about to see here is implementing lift on the smallest airways, models of the smallest airways. Have a look. This is lift, and I actually brought you a chip to show you this. These are models that are under a millimeter. Most of your lungs are actually under a millimeter. Lift has the ability to reach even the deepest airways. And with this, think ahead. Lift becomes a delivery platform, a way to reach therapeutics where aerosols can't go. And we're talking big particles, stem cell therapy, and so on and so forth. So here we are. My group is trying hard to deliver future inventions, solutions to drug delivery to the lungs. And it's true. I didn't really found the next big Ferrari, did I? And I can admit to this, it, it pinches a little bit. But if you step outside of our lab and you come over and visit me at my office, well, you'll see I really haven't forgotten about race cars. Thank you very much. Thank you.